Thank you, Chairman Toomey, uh, Ranking Members Merkley, and members of the committee. Um, my name is Terry Foster. I serve as Executive Vice President and CEO of MCS Bank. We are a $137 million asset bank headquartered in Lewistown, Pennsylvania. We are State Charter Mutual Savings Bank, and we were originally chartered in 1923. Our bank serves exclusively rural populations in central part of the state. I have served in my current role at MCS Bank since 2009, but I have served the bank in other capacities for the past 20 years. I would like to add that I have also been a customer of this very bank since I was a young boy. I also serve as the current chairman of the Pennsylvania Association of Community Bankers and as a member of the Mutual Bank Council of the Independent Bankers, Community Bankers of America. I wish to thank you for convening today's hearing and providing, with, providing me with the opportunity to testify. I want to emphasize that my testimony is based upon my own experiences and observations as a rural community banker, as well as from the perspective of my fellow bank employees' dealings with our customers and stakeholders. I also speak from the perspective of a $137 million institution trying to preserve our ability to survive and maintain a presence in communities where local banking and service is so very important. I refer to you to my written testimony for greater details on our bank, its history, staff, and markets, but I do think it's important to mention that and stress the fact that within two of the communities in which we have branches, we are the only bank in town. By their nature, rural markets create unique efficiency challenges in terms of serving dispersed populations as compared to the more densely populated suburban and urban areas. The fact that MCS Bank at just $137 million in assets operates five full service branches to reach our customer base illustrates this point. Every dollar of cost rural institutions must incur to maintain compliance with new or heightened regulatory requirements disproportionately impact institutions like mine. Unique population dynamics in the rural markets call for specialty servicing knowledge and are a critically important reason that community banks in rural markets do survive. In our market, we see, serve a unique population in the plain sector of the Amish community. Amish, for those of you who are not familiar, live simple agrarian existences, avoid the use of modern technologies, including electricity and automobiles, place of automobiles, they travel by horse-drawn buggy. Because of their social and religious conventions and aversion to technology, serving this demographic takes a keen local understanding of this community to meet its members' needs, a community that will never be understood by banks headquartered in suburban or urban centers and whose needs are not a part of the equation when branch consolidation or clo closure decisions are being contemplated. I like to tell the story of how in the wake of a large regional bank abandoning a rural community with a high concentration of the Amish residents, we were able to figure out a way to restore local banking. The loss of this branch was devastating to the community's residents and businesses, particularly to the Amish residents whose transportation limitations created an unusual hardship by forcing them to travel long distances to another community to do their banking at a branch to which their account servicing was transferred. MCS Bank worked with the community leaders and business owners, and eventually we partnered with a local businessman to build and operate a 530 square foot branch within his family's building supply and hardware store. Today, this branch is thriving, albeit much smaller, and supporting the community, and we have provided financing to the Amish community for such projects as the purchase of, of land for farm expansion and for the construction of a new retail store. The potential loss by this particular community is just one example of situations that are playing out in communities across the nation. I believe very strongly the community banking industry is experiencing consolidation, particularly in rural markets, at an accelerating rate for a host of reasons, but one being the escalating compliance-related costs and complexities. I argue that a great deal of time and resources we are devoting towards our efforts to comply with the letters of the law and regulations, their complexities and many inconsistencies have had a detrimental impact, detrimental impact on our ability to serve our customers with both products and service delivery. Has Dodd-Frank, for instance, impacted the products our bank offers? Absolutely. Since the introduction of QM and ability to repay, MCS Bank is discontinuing offering balloon-type loans. With the volume of rules to interpret and implement, we had to focus our efforts on the most utilized of our mortgage products. The required escalation of our compliance focus negatively impacts bank stakeholders such as community organizations, charities, etc., which have historically been the beneficiaries of our philanthropic efforts. 
the more time our people must devote to compliance is less time available for them to spend on volunteer and charitable endeavors. Increased regulatory costs also negatively impact the community by way of diverting financial resources away from community investment. As increased costs and other pressures work collectively to incentivize further consolidation, larger organizations with distant headquarters locations lack the appreciation and commitment to local needs in the rural areas. Are the theories behind consumer-focused regulations well intended? Absolutely. The notion of ability to repay, as generally defined, has long been an underwriting practice of prudent community bankers and lenders, but the codification of such concepts into regulation is fraught with complexity, inconsistencies, and in some cases, lacks logic. The unintended consequences is confusion, which ultimately leads to human error, additional costs, and potential examiner criticism. I refer the committee members to the detailed example in my written testimony for examples of human error situations that we've experienced. Because of the timing of today's hearing, which coincides with the ongoing work to, fulfill, to fully implement the rules of the new TRID requirements, I have also included some TRID examples in my written testimony. Uh, the complexity involved in implementing TRID is taxing on all parties involved. In our case, our third-party loan origination software providers' applications were not ready to go on October 3rd. As a result, our testing protocols were delayed. At this point, we're still determining if the new rules will allow us to continue to offer certain types of single closing construction loans that have ARM features, which have benefits to consumers from the standpoint of cost reductions as well as reduced time and inefficiency. It also impacts our ability to reduce our interest rate risk. Final issue I wanted to share with the committee is what I term the flood map creep. Flood zone expansion has exposed our bank to reputation damage an instance of a formal consumer complaint being lodged with the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities and ultimately a lost customer. Again, in my written testimony, I've provided a detailed example of this very instance. Um, in terms of recommendations, there are a number of bills that, that are in front of the, the, the Senate that uh, pr we believe will provide some significant relief from many of the concerns that I raised and I'm sure other, other witnesses will also raise. And I cite a sampling of these specific bills and their favorable provisions within my written testimony. Lastly, I'd just again like to thank you for the opportunity to testify today. And I do hope that my comments will be beneficial to the work of the subcommittee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Mr.